a Fanboys Forever production. Tower Bunger, you made a great choice, mm -hmm. Michelangelo. The pizza-loving fool himself. That's right. Uh, whether you know him as Michelangelo, or Cousin Oliver, or that bus driver guy that got eaten, or crushed to death, sorry, yes. in Sharknado, uh, this is the guy. Maybe so. Booger from the uh, seldom scene Revenge of the Nerds TV pilot. Or maybe you've already clicked off of this video because these guys are just too weird for you. Yeah. That's alright. Hopefully, but if you get all of those things that we said, you pass the test and you get to be our friend. You get to be our friend. So, good luck. Mm -hmm. Ah, good luck and a closer look at Michelangelo from the 1990 Jim Henson movie line from Playmates Classic Series 2014 oh, San Diego Comic-Con. Collectors friendly. Toys R Us. Ninja Turtles action figures. 32 plus for articulation. Collector friendly. Playmates sent that check in. I hope so. I gotta eat. Huh? What? It's like action figures in 3D! And speaking of action figures in 2D, here we have a video review for the 1990 Jim Henson's movie Ninja Turtle Michelangelo. Yep, the party dude himself, Michelangelo. That's right. Um, um, Michelangelo, you know, I'm, I'm just going to say right off the bat, is the figure we probably have the most mixed feelings about. And uh, there are some very specific reasons that we will go into in pretty heavy detail. Uh, Michelangelo, as you can see, has really a pretty basic sculpt. Um, I think a lot of people really uh, misremember the designs from the film, uh, the puppets, that is. Um, a lot of people, because of the old Playmates uh, movie star figures from the 90s, seem to remember them as like being really scaly and really like toad-like. As a matter of fact, we actually have the old movie star figure. Brandon, yeah, uh, let's go ahead and break that yeah, out go ahead for comparison's sake. Um, as you can see, uh, these old figures are extremely well textured. Uh, they're very bumpy. And uh, in a lot of ways, they're more detailed than the new ones. They really are. Yeah, in general, they're much more detailed. But... Um, they may appear like that in the movie, but if you really get a good look at them, you'll see that they're actually uh, like smooth uh, latex. Well, as a matter of fact, the... here's a picture right now of the Michelangelo from the film. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, and you know he he doesn't really look much. He, he doesn't have all these details and things in his skin and all these obvious spots everywhere and all this stuff going on. Now. You know, it, it's just, it's not quite like that. No, no, not at all. Uh, it's really a very smooth kind of latex with um, with uh, texture airbrushed on. It's not actual physical texture in those old costumes, uh, like a lot of people may believe. So, in terms of accuracy, the sculpt is very good, but it is, uh, it is very smooth. Uh, it, he could have really used, with a good deal of uh, paint on the body, uh, some washes or something, to give him some of that texture that people perceive. Uh, so, really, it's unfortunate he doesn't, he doesn't get either one, uh, but uh, you know it's uh, it's not a bad sculpt. It absolutely does the job. It's uh, uh, pretty nice, as you can see. Uh, Michelangelo, like all the turtles, has two individually sculpted elements, and that is his belt uh, and then his face. Uh, the face is really, I think, the point of contention for us. Uh, I don't want to get into the negatives uh, right away, so we'll come back to that. But uh, just let this look sink in for a moment, if you will. All right, guys, uh, let's talk about paint a little bit. There's actually not hardly uh, much paint at all to speak of. Uh, really, the only true paint application on this figure is on the eyes, and it's sort of questionable. On my sample of Michelangelo that I got, uh, there's not quite enough white uh, there, so some of the orange from the uh, plastic on the bandana actually bleeds through ever so slightly. Also, my... My eyes are pretty good. It's nothing like the derp eyes we saw in classic Stonatello. Uh, the paint's, you know, pretty good, but, it, you know, it's maybe not exactly centered. Other than that, I don't see any kind of airbrushing or anything uh, for Michelangelo. I, I don't think there's... Which any, really is missed, uh, like I said. There's no extra Very unfortunate paint didn't detail. Go a little further. Um, there's a few freckles from the movie that they really could have painted on there very subtly. So, missed opportunity on the paint, but as you can see, this color of green is very, very movie accurate for the suits that were used in the film. Uh, clearly, Playmates spent, uh, actually, a, I think, quite a bit of research and time trying to make sure that this green matched, as well as the front shell, uh, the belts. Everything is the right color. Mm -hmm. On the back, you can see the shell is really nice. It's uh, Everybody has the same shell sculpted yeah. on the back. So even though you don't get a lot of paint amps, you get a good variation of plastic colors, and enough to, to certainly do the trick, even if... A few paint apps would have been nice. Yeah. Uh, Michelangelo comes with three accessories. Uh, he has his uh, trademark nunchucks, or nunchaku, or I don't know. There's I don't know the There's proper some martial. Crap that I don't know at the, the flea market calls them. Yeah, I don't know the proper martial arts term for it. So we're just gonna call them nunchucks uh, because we're uh, 
ignorant Americans. Um, really uh, nice little accessory. Uh, there's a lot of good sculpted wood grain on them, uh, as you can see. And then they actually have a really nice and sturdy metal chain, which is great. Something we've uh, never really gotten with a Michelangelo figure before, except I think the NECA comic book figure had a metal chain, pretty sure. Uh, but, uh, you know, really good. Uh, very basic, but of course in the movie uh, they're very basic, so you can't ask for more. Uh, the only real problem with them is uh, they're so heavy because of the metal chain, and Michelangelo's hands don't really clasp well enough. Sometimes he can, well, I just see I just did it and it was fine. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the, just suffice to say... He's got to have a good grip yeah. on the nunchuck. And you can get it because the fingers are superposable. Mm -hmm. Just be aware that, you know, if it, it may not it may take a few forever, tries. It took know. me about five minutes earlier to do it, so. Uh, and it just pops right out, of course. Uh, he includes two, of course, and then in addition to those, he has a base stand, which is, of course, reused from the uh, Classics uh, animated figures that they did uh, a couple years ago. And uh, it's, of course, very nice, and there's actually a good deal of uh, nice black wash on this. I wish they would have used a little bit of that for the figure itself. And, of course, it is a personalized base stand with 1990 movie mic on the front. As for articulation, Michelangelo has a an absolute metric ton of it. Uh, <laughs> According to the box, Michelangelo has 34 points of articulation, and we'll run through those with you rather quickly. Uh, at the head, he's got a pretty good range of movement up and down all the way around. There's a cut right here. As a, it actually serves as a hinge, which you can actually get a whole lot of movement out of. You can actually get quite a bit of left and right, so that actually leads to some great posing opportunities. Uh, it's a whole lot more movement than these stunt actors in the suits were able yes. to get in the actual movie. So uh, Down here, we just have you know your regular kind of hinged... Uh, area the midsection and uh, the feet don't go up a whole big lot but they go up enough for kicks and if you put them out to the side they go up even more uh, down here we have double jointed knees we have a cut right here at the thigh we have double jointed elbows which actually work real well you can actually have quite a good reach all the way in all the way out uh, one area that concerns me about all the turtles which if you listen to the reviews you'll hear me talk about it each time is that right here at this joint it the plastic doesn't hardly seem as sturdy as it should be so it gives a lot like this before you can ever make that uh, the shoulder joint actually move. So rather than trying to like bend this to make this joint move, I usually try to grab the shoulder itself and then work it up and down. But they're awfully tight at the shoulders, and I've loosened some of mine up, but Michelangelo is not one of them I've loosened up just by uh, going back and forth. So be real careful when you get yours that you're not actually ripping the bicep off or yeah, something. Yeah, I'm worried some of these are going to See, I, right I finally out. got it to go down, but I mean, it took quite a bit of doing and going back and forth. So uh, that's uh, kind of a disappointment from Playmates. He usually doesn't have any problems like that. Uh, down here, you can see we actually have... A cut right here, which we almost never get with figures these days. At the ankle, we have a hinge, and quite a good one actually that goes up and down. The toes are individually hinged, so pretty cool. And my favorite little bit of articulation, you actually have the hands that have completely hinged fingers all the way in, all the way out. You can do about anything you want with them. And an opposable thumb. Yep, a opposable thumb, which no turtle ought to have. <laughs> So, pretty interesting. Some really great points of articulation. The bear share! The articulation, he has the bear share of articulation. He does. Um, the articulation with Michelangelo, as well as the other three turtles, is absolutely the strong point. Um, it's the thing that I feel like they got the most right. Definitely a selling point for all these figures, so <laughs> great. It's scale comparison time. That's right, Pixel Dan. I didn't say comparison time. No. Nope. Scale, scale comparison, comparison time. Which is totally our thing now. Yes. And I'm going to mail it to myself to make sure it's and poor man copyrighted. Completely proprietary. That's right. Don't worry, Pixel Dan, we love you. We're yes, just kidding. absolutely. All right. So uh, here's some scale comparisons so you guys can get a better idea of how big this guy is. Mm -hmm. uh, for this, we probably want to take him off of the stand so we can get a true height yeah. comparison. This will add an extra good half inch to him. So here we go. Here he is with a 2003. Hey, what's going on, little dude? Duh. I got to go cry about how nobody remembers my show. It was a good show. Don't go. All right. And here we have Michelangelo with a vintage Michelangelo. And as you can see, there's... It's my absolute <laughs> favorite Michelangelo. I had this when I was a kid. I love this guy. He's sort of a little like Cousin Eddie from the Vacation right. Films. Definitely. That's what he always reminds me of. Uh, as you can see, he's even smaller by comparison. So, you know, there is going to be no interaction between the two of these guys. 
here is one of the 2007 TMNT Ninja Turtles figures. Now, Raphael was the very tallest of those guys, mm -hmm. and they clocked in at a really solid six or six and a half inches. Mm -hmm. And if we stand Michelangelo as straight as he can go, just like uh, huh? Raphael here, he's about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch taller yeah. than Raphael. So putting these guys firmly in the seven-inch realm. Yeah, actually, <clears throat> true seven-inch figures, uh, like uh, most collector's lines from NECA and the other companies. So, uh, you know, if you're going to have these interact with any, with any other figures that you've got, this is about the best shot, but they're still a little bigger. You know, they, they feel really similar. Mm -hmm. There's something about handling these that feel a lot like these. Yeah, and of course, so. these had excellent articulation at the time. The best articulation we'd ever gotten with any right. turtles before. So, pretty interesting. Absolutely. And, because as of right now, there are only four classics movie figures. You're going to have to be digging into that old toy bin to get something for them to fight. So, here we have Michelangelo with their arch nemesis. He's a super shredder! And as if he wasn't tiny enough already compared to the vintage figures, he is just absolutely dwarfed. I think Brandon's Michael being Angela. utterly ridiculous. As you can you can all remember that Super Shredder was about three feet tall, give or take an inch or two. Yeah. Brandon, don't act like you agree with me now, buddy, because you blew it just a second ago. Three feet tall, just like in the movie, he knocked down a fire hydrant when he got up, mm -hmm. you know, out of the bay, scared the turtles to death, they all ran out of there, they were gone. I was terrified as a child. Or that maybe, little thing coming after me. Maybe it should have been more like this. Gone. Gone. Boom. Gone. Turtles 3, no shredder for you. Awful. Da -da 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 -da. Well, folks, that was our closer look at Michelangelo. That's right, Cousin Oliver himself. Um, <clears throat> as we said in the video review, uh, Michelangelo has a lot of really good things going for him. Uh, unfortunately, his head sculpt is probably the weakest out of all the turtles. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good head sculpt, and uh, it certainly is well characterized. It definitely is movie Michelangelo. But I just don't care for it myself. I just think it's... Uh, a lot of people have complained that Leonardo isn't um, a very appropriate still uh, face to use for like group shots and things. But I think Michelangelo is really the least appropriate. Well, uh, once again, Playmates has been doing something a little weird with her Michelangelo's. And they were this was a problem with the uh, 2014 you know, movie, mm. Michelangelo from the new movie. Uh, he looks, he's just not happy enough. You know, they really no, need to make sure not joyful, you know. So, you know, uh, other than that, though, like with all the other turtles, uh, like we said, he's got plenty of articulation. Not all really the materials are, you know, super solid, but that's, you know, you guys saw that in the close-up. I think he actually has the best weapons out of any of the four turtles. Oh, yeah, those metal chains really count for a lot. Mm -hmm. I really wish Raphael's size, uh, you know, had been like yeah, metal. Like, like a little die cast. cast. Yeah, that would have been that pretty been incredible. Great. And helped justify that price tag. Mm -hmm. So for $20, you know, that's that's a lot. However... For any super articulated figure now, and even the ones that aren't so super articulated, mm -hmm. you're going to pay $20 now. Yeah, That's the new standard price. And these are really quite a bit bigger than things mm -hmm. like oh, your, they're, uh, These are really 7-inch scale. Yeah. So. These are more like in scale with NECA figures, you know, <laughs> with your NECA. Yeah. So you can use them with your Freddy Krueger and your Ash from Evil Dead or whatever you want. So taking all that into account, he has, you know, really nice weapons. He's got a great display stand. Yeah. Uh, he's still twenty dollars, so I would have to say uh, three and a half stars for Michelangelo. Yeah, I think that's very fair. Three and a half out yeah. of five stars. You know, um, with these four figures, really, um, all you have to go by to differentiate them is the head sculpt and the weapons. You mm -hmm. know, the bodies are identical except for the the trappings, the bandoliers right. and stuff. So, uh, you know, when it comes to Michelangelo, he's got the he's he's sort of a mid range because he's got the worst head but the best weapon. So yeah. there you go. He's a he's, he's a true mixed yeah. bag. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. Uh, once again, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. We're a very small YouTube channel, and we don't get to do this as much as we'd like, so please try to help support Fanboys Forever, and we Absolutely. really appreciate it. Uh, any comments or suggestions you guys have, or a video review of any of this you guys want to see, mm -hmm. please let us know. Uh, we'll constantly be trying to switch up the assortment of toys you see in the background, and we're just uh, thrilled that you guys would tune in with us. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Folks, until next time, this has been Brandon. And this has been Jared. Fanboys Forever. Signing out. But, of course, it is a personalized base stand with Mike movie. Uh, oh. <laughs>